This is episode number 218 of the Middle Country Public Library Podcast. Hello and welcome. I'm Sal DiVincenzo here in the studio with my fabulous colleague, Sarah Fate. Hello. And Nicole Rambo. Hello. How you ladies doing? Good. You know, we have a special episode this mm. week. We're doing oh. something new on the podcast. We have a new segment. Nice. It's called This Week in History. Hey. Hey. Nice. And we have our, uh, our very own Jim Ward is mm-hmm. going to come in and uh, we're going to talk about uh, something very cool. Cool. So, uh, so here it comes. Hello, Jim. Hello, Sal. How are you? Good. How are you? Good, thanks. I'm very excited because this week we're starting a new segment, something that we're going to be doing on a regular basis, and you're going to be joining us every now and then for a special episode to talk about something very exciting for you, which is history. Yes. Because this week we're introducing This Week in History. (laughs) And what's unique about this segment is that we're going to pick weeks where it's the same time frame, but two or three different amazing things happen, very historic things happen right. in history. Right. So we have, for our first episode, we have this week. Oh, this is like the mecca of this historical is, events that This is that big occurred. this week. Yep. Okay, so this week just so happens to be mm-hmm. the anniversary of the sinking of the Titanic yep. and the assassination of President Lincoln. Right. Happening in the same week. Same same two days. Same two days. Same two See, days. We, pull, we pulled out all the stops for our first <laughs> special segment of This Week in History. In History. <laughs> I love that. Okay. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, the Titanic and the Lincoln assassination both occurred April 14th and 15th. The Lincoln assassination was April 14th, 1865. Uh, where Lincoln was shot at Ford's Theater by John Wilkes Booth. He was um, subsequently carried over to a boarding house across the street, and he died in in that boarding house at uh, 7.22 in the morning on April 15th. April 15th. And the Titanic? The Titanic struck the iceberg 11.40 p.m. on uh, April 14th and sank at 2.20 in the morning on April 15th. It's amazing how these historical, these big historical events happen yep. to happen. Their anniversaries yeah. happen, and another historical event happens. It's so bizarre, and it's it's like other events too that I think have also taken place on yes. this day. I think actually from 2013, I think the Boston Marathon bombing I think happened on that day. So yeah, it's it's a weird, sad two days that yes that that seems to always have something. Exactly. So there's other there are other dates that we're going and weeks that we're going to yes. talk about. But this week, let's start off with the sinking of the Titanic. Okay. So the sinking of Titanic happened uh, the, on April April 14th, 14th, 1912. 1912. Tell us something about the Titanic. So the Titanic uh, at the time was the largest moving object ever built by man. Uh, I believe it was 882 feet nine inches long. Um, it had the it was luxurious and elegant, and um, it was that it that and its sister ship, the Olympic, were rivaling the um, the Mauritania and I want to say the Lusitania, if I'm not mistaken, the two Cunard liners, mm-hmm. um, which were built for speed. But the Titanic, they wanted to be bigger and more elegant for a more comfortable uh, traveling experience. Sure. And it's amazing when to think about, you know, to go transatlantic, to go from Europe to the United States yep. was days, not hours. Right. I think we take that for granted when we have like a, a half hour, 45 minute delay when we're sitting in the plane. Yeah, we're spoiled today. We're very spoiled <laughs> in that respect. I mean, a lot of people know the story, but they were steaming along. Mm-hmm. They were warned that they were icebergs. Yeah, then th- th- that day, I think they received, uh, on April 14th, they received, I think, six ice warnings that uh, some made it to the bridge. I think one was actually in the pocket of the man- managing director of the White Star Line, uh, J. Bruce Ismay, uh, which I don't believe got to the bridge that one. The captain had one. 
Um, it, it was, and they weren't taking it seriously because, you know, they, technology was going to beat nature. And also because they had these bulkheads that would go up and, and kind of like block off water mm -hmm. from, uh, from going over to the next one. In fact, that didn't really occur because the first five compartments were hit. Anything more than four compartments, the ship's going to sink because yeah. the water's just going to, almost like an ice cube tray, just go into the next the next room then. That pretty much doomed the ship yep. right, right there. And then is it true that uh, they were traveling a little faster than they had to at that point? There there was um, a first class passenger, I think her name was Elizabeth Lines, said that she was in, uh, I think, the first class dining room and happened to hear Bruce Ismay, the managing director of the White Star Line, speaking to Captain Smith and saying that they wanted to beat the Olympics record, and we wanted to get into New York on Tuesday, which I think would be like one day earlier, earlier. than expected. And um, so I, they did. They did increase the speed, I believe, on 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 that uh, Sunday Sunday evening. Sunday evening. Yeah. So they hit the iceberg just before midnight. I would I would think right mm -hmm. eleven forty. Eleven forty. Yep. Uh, and how long did it take for the ship to sink? Two hours and uh, forty minutes. It was just crazy. Right. And the first lifeboat, just from my understanding and what I've read, I think didn't go out into the sea until an hour after. Mm -hmm. So all that time was lost. Some lifeboats were not filled to capacity. I think there were only 12 in one boat, 27 in another, mm -hmm. but they could hold much, much more than that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's unfortunate that these terrible uh, events have to happen in order f for the uh, future Mm -hmm. uh, folks on the cruises and on the ships to have better safety, but it did it did change the rules of of shipping. Oh, it did. Yeah, it. Um, they made sure that you would have to have the right amount of lifeboats um, for the amount of passengers that it could hold. Um, the Titanic had only sixteen lifeboats, uh, four that they called the Engelhart collapsible ones, and so a total of twenty altogether. Those were inadequate for the what was it, 2,200 people. people that were on board. Yeah. In and fact, I, yeah, and Titanic could hold even more than that. Yeah. So they would have been, if it was a full capacity, they would have been, there would have been many, many more people who died. Yeah, and and because of it, now nowadays, they are, they're actually more than enough lifeboats. Mm -hmm. I think yep. they have redundancy yes. uh, built into the lifeboats. They have And trainings, and, right? Yeah, they have the trainings, trainings on board. They have the muster drill. Yeah, you, know, you have to take a muster drill. So yep. you have to show that you have to go out there and prove that you uh, know how to put on your life jacket and right. where to step and where to be when and, it's time to uh, to abandon ship if it's necessary. Yeah, and ironically, that day there was supposed to be a lifeboat drill. Mm -hmm. It was they canceled. Can, yeah, yeah they canceled they it. They thought it was great. You know, yeah. this ship is. They fantastic. didn't. They couldn't ever fathom that this ship would sink. All right. So I'm sure uh, there are a number of our listeners who. Who have seen the movie Titanic? Oh yes. I mean, I I would have to say probably our younger listeners probably base everything that they know about the Titanic disaster on that film. On the film, yeah. But we have other things here at the library. We sure do. That they should be looking exactly. Into. What are some of your favorite books that um, we have here for the Titanic? So the one that I really like, and this was actually written by uh, Walter Lord. He was a historian. Um, back in the 50s, he wrote this, I believe it was. And he had interviewed, because think at the time, there were so many more of the survivors alive that he went around and interviewed so many of them. And um, it really is like a minute-by-minute minute account of what happened that night. Doesn't doesn't really get into the weeds of like the construction and the, the competition between shipping lines and stuff. It kind of just sticks with what happened that night. And it's a short read. It's not. It's not uh, too dense or anything. It's. I. It's actually one of my favorites. Um, and then another one is Unsinkable, the full story of the Titanic. Um, I believe that's Daniel Butler who wrote that. That one is a more in depth look at um, why the ship was built, talking about its luxury, you know, luxury and elegance, and but also then covers the the events that happened on the Titanic, but also the inquiries that occurred after. Uh, the ship sank. There were two inquiries, inquiries, one in America and one in Britain, and um, those interviewed many of the survivors, and that actually led to a lot of things changing uh, with maritime rules and laws. And then there is a, a good documentary, and this is one of my favorite things. This is one of the things I could watch over and over again. Uh, it's ti Titanic, The Complete Story, and in that uh, collection is Death of a Dream, which is um, the story of the Titanic from before it and then up to the sinking. And then the legend lives on, which kind of picks up 
after the sinking and also I think it goes into like when they found it uh, back in 1985 and, you know, and, and how how long it took for them to actually get the technology. But it, it's a, that's a very good documentary. Excellent. And we'll put everything that uh, you're talking about today in our show notes so sure. folks can click on it. If you have a middle country card, you can just reserve those. Absolutely. So that's the Titanic and maybe about well, a little over 50 years before. Yep. We had another huge historical event. Yes. Also tragic. Yes. Uh, the assassination of President Abraham Lincoln. Mm-hmm. So tell us a little bit about that. April 14th, 1865 was a jubilant time for the country. Robert E. Lee had surrendered to Ulysses S. Grant at Appomattox Courthouse on April 9th. Richmond had fallen the week before. So it, for all intents and purposes, the war was coming to a close and the country was going to be reunited. So there was much celebration going on in in Washington and across the country. And um, Lincoln, I think, was feeling a little more lighthearted. And uh, apparently he didn't want to actually go to the play that day, but he did. he did enjoy – the going to Ford's theater and other and Grover's theater to to see various plays. He mm-hmm. just he found it very relaxing. So uh, what he thought was going to be a very calm night, less worry about the war, you know, ended up being that he was uh, shot by John Wilkes Booth while watching Our American Cousin, and um, and he passed away the next morning. The next morning, this is something that I did not know. Is that I I had assumed that he had died like very briefly after he was shot. But evidently, the type of gun that John Wilkes Booth used, it was, a, uh, I guess, a smaller caliber gun. Yeah, it was, it was a Derringer. Like one, of the, one of those kind of like it gets lodged in like there's internal bleeding. And yep. It's like a slow killer, unfortunately. Yeah, and it's I believe it's a ball that goes in there, too. Like it wasn't like the the Civil War muskets where it was a rifled uh Musket, uh, musket ball or uh, mini ball, as they called it. This was like, I think, like a circular mm-hmm. ball. And um, yeah, it, it got lodged. It went through the back and lodged, I think, behind his right eye. And the, the doctor deemed it mortal. What uh, was the reason that John Wilkes Booth uh, shot the president? Well, initially, it was actually supposed to be a kidnapping plot. Really? Um, in March of 1865, uh, he and some uh, other conspirators were going to kidnap Lincoln while he was coming back uh, from, I think, a, a hospital or something on the, on his way back to the White House, and Lincoln never showed. So uh, then you have the fall of Richmond, you have Lee surrendering, and I think that just set him off to the point where he figured this would save the Confederacy. I see. So he went to the ultimate task of, of actually wanting to murder the, the president of the United States. Yeah, terrible. It's unbelievable. Terrible thing. So again, most people nowadays, they watch these movies about uh, history and whatnot, but there's so many other great sources oh, uh, sure. for, for folks to find out more information about uh, Lincoln. So uh, what were your, some, some, some of your suggestions? Uh, well, my, my all-time favorite book on the subject is Manhunt by James Swanson. And that one I really like because it doesn't just follow what happened at the theater and then staying in the room with uh, with Lincoln in the Peterson house, it follows John Wilkes Booth and the other conspirators as they are escaping. So uh, David Harold was one of the conspirators that actually was with Booth uh, after they met up. And uh, they were basically, it details them going through the swamps and the forests of uh, Maryland. And even, and it's so good that even one of the, uh, the situations in the book is where they're trying to cross the Potomac, but the current, actually turns them around and brings them back to Maryland. Oh, man. And they, they're like, oh, no. And in, the, in your head for a second, you're like, oh, man, that stinks. Mm-hmm. Well, that's an awful, you know. Yeah, yeah, and then you yeah. go, but then you go, no, no, yeah, yeah. no, they need to be captured. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> You actually feel like what they were feeling. That's interesting. Yeah, it's, it, it's very well written. And um, he actually wrote another one called Bloody Crimes, which is about the funeral march and basically the trip back to Springfield and everything that happened after the assassination. And then another good one is The Assassin's Accomplice. This is by Kate Clifford Larson. It focuses on Mary Surratt. She was the one who owned um, a boarding house in Washington, D.C., where the conspirators supposedly met a lot. Her son, John, uh, would have John Wilkes Booth over, David Harold, George Atzerott. But I forget the saying that, th- that she was the one that hatched 
the plan with not not that she hatched the plan, um, but that she allowed the plan to be planned to in her in yeah. her boarding house. Yeah. Um, and actually, she was the first woman ever hanged for by the federal government. Wow. Yeah. So she uh, there was there was attempts to try to get her maybe just a prison sentence mm-hmm. and you know, but um, she ended up hanging with the other three. Wow. Yep. History is amazing. It is. It, and it's, it's really, it's, you know, we, we can learn so much from it, but I, I feel like we don't. <laughs> I think I think it needs to feel more real for people. I think yeah. just thinking about dates and, mm-hmm. you know, this and that, they if they don't read more deeply in, into the, you know, these were people just like you and me. Mm-hmm. They, you know, lived in a different time. So they, yeah. you know, but, but same emotions, same feelings, you know. Yeah. And uh, sometimes you just got to try to put yourself in their shoes. Exactly. Well, that's great stuff, Jimmy. Very exciting. Very excited about this uh, this series moving forward. Me too. Forward. I'm looking We're forward to it. Pick some other cool times oh, where we'll not. have a week <laughs> where there's two or three or maybe four things oh, happening boy. all in the same. We'll have to make this an hour then. Yeah, the yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's going to be great. So uh, thanks so much, Jim, for coming sure. down for Thank this you for uh, special me. episode. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay, we are back. That was very cool. It's very interesting to know that uh, you know you have these big, huge events that happen to happen around the same time of year. Mm. Does that have something to do with the horoscope? Do you think? Like, Obviously, the, the, of course, it's, it's science. Uh, Nicole, it's uh, yes, yes. Uh, it's science. Yes. So. <laughs> so, thank you so much for listening to this special episode. If you want to listen to older episodes or read our show notes, visit our website mcplpodcast.com. Hit the like button. Hit subscribe. We want a thousand. Uh, sub- subscribers by we're getting there we're yeah. getting there by yeah. Labor Day so if you're watching uh, and listening on YouTube please do that uh, and uh, thank you so much for listening for Sarah Fade and Nicole Rambo I'm Sal DiVincenzo we'll see you on the next show